Hey, how's it going YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Uh, how's everybody's season going? Let me leave, uh, leave some information in the comments. Let me know how everybody's season's going. It's pretty slow here right now. Uh, we only have like two uh, female Sean follicles. It's coming up on uh, probably next week. Um, it'll be due for ultrasounding again. I do need to do a video on ultrasounding and get that out and show y'all uh, how to ultrasound, how I ultrasound and um, show you some progression on some females. But today in this video, we are talking about how I wire up my ARS racks, how we set our thermostats and uh, just what works for us. Now remember, you are going to have to figure out what works for you. Uh, your environment, your uh, atmosphere, your situation is totally different. Uh, you may have to set your temps a little higher. You may have to set them a little lower. Uh, you'll just have to play around with it and figure it out. Um, all I can do for you is give you a baseline, set the foundation for you, but you're going to have to build your own building and figure out uh, what works best for you. So let's jump into it. Uh, what you're looking at is the back end of an ARS 5040 rack, uh, the hybrid rack. And I know I mentioned in the hybrid rack before about the plastic pieces, but I didn't get a chance to show you all the back end. Even the back end stoppers are plastic too. So all the plastic pieces really cut down on the cost of the rack. But as you see, there's a probe there on that level. And as we go down, there is another probe there. So what we do is we end up splitting uh, our, our rack. We do five levels at the bottom and then five levels at the top up there. As you'll notice, the probe, and I've had probes come off before, and it's not a, it's not a good thing at all. So it's duct taped down to the um, heat panel here. Don't use aluminum tape, you'll get interference and all that crap, you'll get buzzing and stuff. But we use, and we don't use regular duct tape, we use the, the Gorilla black duct tape. So it sticks way better. Then I put another piece here as a secondary backup piece because sometimes this will slide out, sometimes even that duct tape will heat up and uh, it'll lose its stickiness, its tackiness, and that will slide out. I've had probes come off and uh, hear my herp stats beeping at me that, hey, your uh, racks, are overheating. Uh, I've heard that in the middle of the night. Thank God for Herpstat and its alarms. But I have it tacked down here. And as you see, this is the Billy from Mutation Creation Method. I put a zip tie back behind this plastic piece. I had to undo the screws and feed that uh, zip tie back there. And I zip tied it real loose, but it's holding it up. And then I did it again right here. And as you go down the, um, probe cord is wound up and zip tied to one of the heat panels uh, power cords so it's hanging there I can it's loose also I can put more give it more slack or take slack away if I need to uh, the bottom is done the exact same way you know it's hard to see but duct tape duct tape zip tie zip tie and then up here it's wound up the same exact way so that's pro placement. Uh, so we did the bottom five levels and I went up to the, the third level here. So one, two, three, third level up. And then over here, I went third level down. One, two, three. So I split the five levels, uh, put the probe in the middle of the five levels on each you know section. So that's pro placement. Now I'll show you uh, what we did over here with the power cords, I'll pull the rack around and show you better how we manage the power cords. And I will uh, even show you how uh, the Herpstat one, or we got Herpstat twos. I will uh, explain how to set those up and uh, set those temps and all that good stuff. Y'all hear that? I plugged it back in, you hear that beeping? That's the alarm. That's basically telling me, you see that negative number next to the, I know it's sideways, <laughs> but that negative number on one and two, that means it's uh, below, uh, that's your uh, low alarm, your low temp alarm. So just wanna show that real quick, I'll let it heat back up, quit beeping so it's not so annoying when I talk. All right, we got the rack pushed back finally. By the way, these racks are no joke in weight. They're about 500 pounds and pushing it on carpet sucks. And yes, I know, I need the vacuum. It's coming today. Calm down. <laughs> Nah, most of y'all are pretty good. But anyways, there's how we have it wired. We don't have the big four foot uh, heat strip because you can't you know, split your levels if they're all on the same power source. 
So you have to get a six plug uh, little power strip right here. Uh, we have it zip tied to the side of the rack. Real simple, you know, plug them in. We have cords zip tied together so they're not hanging all over the place. You know, just basic cable management. We all hate cables and we all try to manage them the best way we can, but you know, they're all tied off the best that I can get them. Now, another important thing is over here on the wall, this right here is a surge protector. This whole rack is plugged into the surge protector. If something happens, you don't want it frying your thermostat. Uh, if it fries your thermostat, you're gonna end up getting hot spots, dead animals, you know, all that crap. So make sure you got a surge protector. It's This is just like a cheap one from, uh, I wanna say Home Depot, it's like seven bucks. Uh, every rack has one. Um, and if I find if I can find a link uh, for that, I will put it in the description. But I, I have it in a surge protector. I have, so we have all the wires. And then the power cords coming from the power strip, we have tangled together. I have it zip tied here, uh, so the weight of it doesn't pull down on my thermostat. The probe wires are also zip tied right here, so they don't fall and don't snag on anything. You do not want your probes snagging. Because uh, they come off, you're going to have dead animals. It's going to cook them. Uh, and here is the back end of the thermostat. I don't know if you can see that, but there's output two up here. Output one is down here. Uh, so I have, what I have is the bottom, um, the bottom of the rack is set on output one. The top is set on output two. Obviously, because the power cord's down here, it's going to power that. You don't want to have to run the cord down and power there so output two powers the top output one powers the bottom and of course more zip ties right got some green zip ties that have this thermostat uh zip tied to this rack and it's through there and under and around and yeah we jimmy rigged it pretty good huh southern engineering at its best so but herbstat two Herbstat 2 you need if you want to uh, split your racks because you got to have two outputs, right? Um, if you have a Herbstat 1, you can't do that. You're going to need a Herbstat 2. So Herbstat 2, they're real easy to set. Uh, and I'm just going to go over this real quick, just basic settings. You hit enter menu, output 1. Remember, that's your bottom, uh, bottom five rows. So you got to click enter menu again, output mode. I have on pulse. I don't have it on dimming, I have it on pulse. Daytime temperature is set to 91.5. Now when you set in your temps and you're doing a split rack like this, your bottom level, your bottom levels down here get cooler because heat rises, right? So you need to set your bottom uh, levels a little hotter than your top ones. So I have the bottom set to 91.5. Of course, it just exited my menu. I have it set to 91.5. I put configuration one. 91.5 is daytime temperature. Now, another good thing about these is I was saying they have a high-low alarm. You want to set it to on, and to set it to on, you just, no, it's not that. You just hit the menu button again, it turns it off, turn it back on. So your high, my high temp alarm, I have set three degrees uh, hotter, or two degrees hotter. So for the high alarm, it's always set two degrees higher. So if the thermostat goes, you know, the, or the heat tape goes uh, two degrees hotter than what I have it set, it'll start beeping at me and say, hey, your stuff's overheating. Now my low temp alarm, which you just hit, and it's exiting again, don't give me no damn time, does it? <laughs> All right, so your low alarm right here, I have set to 89.5, so it's two degrees cooler. So if the thermostat reads two degrees uh, cooler than what I have it set on at 91.5, if it gets down to 89.5, it'll start beeping and let me know, hey, your stuff's too cold, something's wrong. So I always do a two over two degrees plus or minus from what it's set at. And of course it's exiting menu again. But uh, that's pretty much uh, how you set the thermostat. I mean, you do the same thing with output two. Uh, it's real easy, you just go configuration two. And you do the same thing. You got your daytime. Uh, you can do night cycles if you want to. You got high low alarm. Uh, I don't really jack with that, so I don't know what that is. Uh, and I don't jack with that. Maximum back. Maximum back. Back. 
not maximum back. I was trying to read the other thing. You can even set up a security passcode if you want to. So if you got employees help, uh, working or you got, you know, family members that come over and you don't really kind of trust them, but you trust them enough to clean your snakes, but you don't want them fucking anything up, you can set your security code. Of course, if I couldn't trust them anyways, I wouldn't. They wouldn't be here cleaning my damn snakes, right? So, but you know, that's basic, basic herp stat. This whole rack's pretty much full. Uh, only missing four tubs there. I got some empty spots. The, I am selling some animals off, uh, getting rid of some animals. Just quickly show you. That is a uh, leopard pastel pin spotter girl. She's over 2,000. She might be close, 3,000 grams. Getting rid of her. There's some other animals I'm getting rid of. Either I might do a video on it. I don't know. But anyways, it's about racks. So there is the ARS rack one more time. 5040, it's a beast. I love ARS. Um, as time goes, I may, you know, upgrade a Freedom Breeder because Freedom Breeder is more of a top of the line, I, I think. And, you know, you got pull out shelves and just, and they customize stuff for you if you need it. So probably upgrade a Freedom Breeder later down the road. But ARS is great. It's a great starter rack into commercial racks. But here's, all the wiring one last time everything's working good and don't forget surge protector guys so that was it uh hopefully i explained it okay to y'all uh if you have any questions please do not hesitate to hit me up uh, i will answer any questions i can to the best of my knowledge and if i can't answer it i will try to point you in the right direction and get your question answered so uh if you enjoyed the video give it a like uh if you are new here uh, hit the uh, subscribe button. About 70% of my viewers have not hit the subscribe button. So all you guys that are watching, hit that sub button. And uh, we'll catch you next week.